If you want to design and develop a high quality learning course, it is important for you to engage and inspire your learners. And the best way to engage your audience is by putting some interactions in your course content. Interactions are a type of course content where your learners have to do some action. They might have to click a button or an image or any text and when they click on that, they get some further knowledge about that topic. This type of course content is called interaction and most of the authoring tools, they have various interaction templates that you can use to improve the engagement of your students. So in this video, we are going to discuss what are different types of interactions and how to put these interactions in your e-learning courses using an authoring tool called iSpring. And iSpring provides you 10 different interaction templates, but it is important for you to know when to use which type of interaction and I will also highlight when to use some of the most important e-learning interactions. So without further ado, let's get started after a short break. Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Tahir and I make videos about educational technology tools available to teachers and students. If you are interested in this topic, please hit the subscribe button and also the notification bell to get notified whenever I post a new video on this channel. For the purpose of this video, I have created this course which has a deck of slides. It has 11 slides and 10 out of these 11 slides have interactions and every interaction is a different type of interaction. We have 14 different types of interaction available in iSpring Suite 11 which is a PowerPoint add-on. I have PowerPoint Home Edition and it works fine with Home Edition. You don't have to buy the professional PowerPoint which is very expensive. So what I'm going to show you is, first I will show you how to add or remove an interaction from your slides and then we will talk about all these types of interactions and where to use these interactions will be discussed either during the video or at the end of the video. So let us start from how to add or remove an interaction from your slide. So I create a new slide. I put my cursor here and insert a new slide and I insert an empty slide. Now I click on iSpring Suite 11 and click on interaction. And now because this slide doesn't have any interaction, so I must click on new interaction. And if the slide has an interaction, then that interaction will be opened and I can edit that. Now, these are different types of interaction. So the simplest one is step-by-step -step interaction, then a timeline, then cyclic process. Then we have a process type of interaction, a labeled graphic, and I'm going to show you how it works, a guided image, hotspot. I will show you an example of hotspot as well. Then we have circle diagram and pyramid. I will show you an example of pyramid as well. Then glossary, media catalog. We will also look at these examples and also I will show you one example of FAQs. Then accordion and tabs are similar to this process. So therefore I will only show you this process example. So I click for example this simplest one and I click on create interaction and now my interaction will be created. Now these are the tabs which are available in every type of interaction but these tabs will change depending on the type of interaction. So the most important tab is the properties tab and in this tab you can change the numbering format most importantly and the title. Instead of steps you will be putting some meaningful text here. So there are some other properties as well which you can change. You can also change the color scheme for step border for example and step numbers. Depending on the type of interaction, sometimes you will have a lot of options in colors and also in this area. If I want to add another step, I click on add step and another step will be added. So if I preview now, my steps are numbered 1, 2, 3, 4. If I want them to number as A, B, C, D, I click on this A, B, C and I click on apply and close. And if I preview now, my steps are A, B, C, D and then I put some meaningful text here. And now when I am finished with this interaction, I click save and return. And now my interaction is inside this. Now to remove the interaction, I click on slide properties and now I have all the slides and on the right hand side, I have this interaction. I first select the slide number, click on this little arrow and click remove and click yes. And now I must click save and close. And now my interaction has been removed. And now I can even remove this slide because this slide was to show you how to add or remove remove the interaction. Step-by-step so step interactions are used in these situations. 
you can pause the video and you can take some notes. Now before we go to the next type of interaction, these are some of the tips for making e-learning interactions. You must understand your audience, you focus on the learning outcome, what you want them to learn from your interactions. And don't put too many interactions on one slide and select some meaningful images and keep a visual hierarchy if possible. So even if they don't need your instructions, they must understand what to do and try to gamify and for that I would recommend that you look at TPT, Teachers Pay Teachers website where teachers are creating a lot of games from learning material and you will get many ideas. And you must give your learner a choice either to click on this button or that button to explore your learning content. Now the next type of interaction is a timeline interaction. Now these are the situations where you use timeline interaction. For example, if you are a history teacher, you want to show your students different time frames or eras of history or any specific topic. Another application could be that you want to teach project management and you want to show a roadmap. Similarly, if you want to tell a story, which is a powerful tool for teaching, then you can use timeline as well. Now let's see what features are available in this type of interaction. So I click on interaction and this time because I already have an interaction on this slide, I should wait for some time and this interaction will open. There are two important things on a timeline interaction. One is the time and the other is an event. So if you look at the end, period and event, these are the two important things. So if I click on this period, I can put some period, for example, December 2005, then I click on this and I put some meaningful text here and some details. To add a period, I click on add period and a new period will be added. I can add multiple events in this period. To do that, I click on add event, another event will be added. And in the properties tab, if I click on colors, I can change the color of any period. So you can customize your timeline. And if I want to save it, I click save and return to the course and a new period is added. Now the next type of interaction is cyclic process. So I click on interaction and let me show you the preview. First there is some explanation, then when the learner click on next, now they can click on any part of this. This is a business cycle and they can get some information about that. So let's say I want to move this merger from this position to this position. To do that, I can either click and drag this merger here or I can also click on move and move counterclockwise. So merger will move one step counterclockwise. I can add another step and a new step will be added, this one. And now I can put some meaningful text here again. I can right click on this and I can delete this step as well. So this is how you create a cyclic process type of interaction and this can be used in business life cycle, insect life cycle or these kind of applications. If you don't want to save, click on close and don't save. The next one is a process type of interaction. This is the most common one. You can add more steps like this or you can simply right click and delete a particular step. You can also add some images in any step. I have added this image. For example, let me delete this and I can simply click on this insert, insert picture and I can select this picture and insert in this and I can also resize this. And rest of the options are same. You can change the color scheme and properties. The next one is very powerful which is called labeled graphic and let me preview this. In this interaction, I want my students to learn how to translate a large PDF and there are five steps. But instead of writing all these five steps, I have put these labels so that they click on any one of these and they learn. Otherwise, they will just pass this slide quickly. So when they click on this label one, they see the detail that split the original PDF into smaller PDFs. Then step two, open each PDF with Google Docs and so on. So in this way, they interact with the course material and they will retain the information. Now let's see what options we have. We can add a label just like a step, but there are few options here. So let us add another label. Now this label has been added and as you can see that it's a plus symbol, but we have these options, marker styles. If I click on marker styles, I have a lot of options. I can choose any of these characters or shape for my image label. So for this particular case, I will prefer this number six and number six will be added. But we have many other options. We have arrows, we have these triangles, camera signs and some other characters are also available. So you can customize your course. The next one is pyramid and these are the situations where you use pyramid interaction to show a hierarchical structure or to show the 
quantity or size of related things. So you can take notes and now let's see what features we have. Let us click on the preview. So this is a learning retention pyramid. How much information people retain from a certain learning activity. So if they take a lecture, they will retain 5% of the lecture on average. If they read something, they will retain 10% of what they have read. If they listen and see something, watch a video with audio, they will retain 20% and so on. So they will keep clicking on this and they will get this further information. And in this way, plus this pictorial representation, they will retain the information. Here you can add another layer and if you select the layer, then you can add another segment to that layer as well. You can add two segments if you want. You can also move a layer up and down as you can see. So these features keep changing depending on the type of e-learning interaction you want to create. So let's close this. Now the next one is also very important type of interaction which is called hotspot images. So let us preview this and in this type of interaction there are some hotspot on this image and when I click on that I get some more information about that particular part of the image. If I click on engine I will see that this is that engine of the airplane. So this type of interaction is very powerful for language teachers for example. If they want to teach various parts of for example a door, what is door knob, what is a stopper, what are different parts of a door. So they can put a door image and they can put some hotspots just like this. If I click here it will show me it's a rudder, it controls yaw. How to add this? Very simple. You click on add hotspot and there, there are different types of hotspots available. Rectangle, ellipse, polylines. Let us create a rectangle this time because all these are ellipses. And then you select that particular area where you want to put that hotspot. And then I can for example put some word here. For example command and control or cockpit whatever. And now I, I click on preview. The new hotspot is there. So this is very powerful interaction for e-learning courses. So now I can click save and return to the course. Now the next one is media catalog and media catalog is also important because here you can put some images with some description and also you can put a video as well. Although putting a video is more useful in your course slides but you can do this in media catalog if the video is very short. So basically these are cards and you can add image or video cards. So if I click on add cards, I have two options, picture card or a video card. And then I add any one of these. And then for example, I add video card and then I can add any video. For example, this one, it will take few seconds to load. And now the video is added. I can click save and return and a new video will be added. Then I can put some description or some meaningful information as well. The next one is called glossary and in this type of interaction you can put some important keywords and their explanation in your course normally at the end of the course. So they can have a look at some of the important words for example what is score, what is a hotspot image, what is what are e-learning interactions. You can add term here, add a term, put a meaningful term here, put an explanation and it will be added. And the last one is FAQs, frequently asked questions. This interaction is very similar to the previous one. Instead of adding items, now you can add some questions and their answers. And if I preview this, it will appear like this. The learner will click on what is score and they will get the answer. Sometime it is very important to make a question for learner in order for them to learn. And at the end I put this video here just to show you that if you put this video in a media catalog, it will not be at a good size. So instead you put your video in your course slide. So I think that I have covered a lot about how you can make e-learning interactions in iSpring Suite 11 and every authoring tool, they have slightly different types of interactions. Thanks to iSpring for sponsoring this video. It's a great tool for online course creators. They have special prices for academics and you can have a look at their website. So if you like this video and you learn something, please hit the like button. Thanks for watching and see you next time.